Okay. <laughs> I think we have sound now. Um, thanks very much and welcome to the people that are here in Centrex and um, also to the people that are online. Um, it's great to be here again after the interview which we did a, a couple of weeks ago. So my second time in Livingston and um, talking tonight about working in the field of HIV. Um, just to explain how I got into this field, um, I was working as a civil servant and reached the kind of age that one does when one starts to kind of think about what am I going to do with the rest of my life? Is this really what I want to do? Um, and the answer came back loud and clear, no it isn't. So I left my job, um, I'm totally uncertain as to where I was going to go, but just certain that I needed to be doing something else. Um, and round about that time, um, in the space of a fortnight, two people that I knew committed suicide and a third who'd been fighting um, a battle with cancer for 10 years um, died. Um, so those three deaths in such a short space of time really made me um, evaluate life and I had all these questions about life and death and I'm um, really trying to make sense of it for myself. Um, at the same time, a friend of mine took over the cafe at Solas, and Solas uh, um, was a, a centre for people with HIV and AIDS in Edinburgh. He had taken over the, the managing the cafe, and they were very short of volunteers. So it seemed an ideal opportunity for me to go somewhere where people were really grappling with issues around life and death, and were, were really living it. Um, so I started volunteering. Um, in the cafe at, uh, at Solas and as time went on it seemed more and more that what I was needed for was to um, just be there to listen to people. Um, it was a very well used cafe and, but pe people were, were really struggling at that time. That was in the early 90s. People who got um, a, an HIV diagnosis were often told that they had two, maybe three years to live, um, which is, you know, quite a consi considerable thing to be hit with. Um, and, you know, it was great for, that, for people to have that opportunity to be able to, to talk to somebody. And the more that, that that went on, the more I realized, actually, this is what I really need to be doing. This, this would really feel right for me. So um, I, I started my training as a counselor and set up a support team at, uh, at SOLAS to be in the cafe ready to, to, to talk to people and I was the first support volunteer and then I went on did the rest of my counselling training and um, when I finished my training after five years of, of uh, volunteering um, I became one of the counsellors at, uh, at Waverley Care and I'm still, I am the counsellor there now. Um, so that's, that's been a long journey for me um, and you know the whole of my counselling career has actually been involved around HIV and AIDS. So that was one of the reasons why John had asked me if it, you know, to, to talk about this tonight. Um, now I'm hoping that the, maybe the, the people here at you here and also the people online in the chat room will have some, some questions at some point, I'd really appreciate it if we could, if it could be a, a really interactive um, talk tonight. Um, but I've got a few things that I, I thought I would cover. Um, one, the first thing is, you know, what is it that makes HIV different from working with other chronic illnesses? Um, then I thought I'd look at what are the, what are the different stages of an HIV diagnosis that people might be likely to come along and seek counselling and what the kind of issues that they might bring. And then looking at various groups of people who have specific um, issues around being HIV positive. Um, so, I've called my talk HIV the Untamed Beast and I saw this, um, I saw that uh, in a, uh, an article that I read recently and it seemed, it seemed right for me because HIV has changed dramatically since the introduction of combination therapy in the mid-90s. Um, people die a lot less from HIV related illnesses um, but HIV cannot be, it, you know, it cannot be cured 
it, it, it has to be lived with. Um, it, you know, it won't go away. Um, so it, in, that, in that respect, it is still untamed. Um, okay. Now, I know some of the people online may well be in other countries, and because I'm, I'm living in Edinburgh, I can only really talk for, for, for the situation in the UK. But these facts I, I found uh, recently is that worldwide, the number of people dying of AIDS is decreasing at around 10% a year. And the number of people living with HIV has probably passed its peak. And that came from the World Health Organization. However, here in the UK, HIV is not decreasing. There are currently 83,000 people living with HIV, and there are 14 newly diagnosed people here for every person who dies of HIV. So it's something that's actually continuing to increase. Now, in the, in the, in the early 90s, late 80s, early 90s, HIV was um, very sexy, if you like. So there were all of these Hollywood movies about beautiful people dying, beautiful deaths of HIV with wonderful music playing. You know, there, were, there was lots of, of stuff, adverts, lots of, lots of, uh, um, lots of talk about HIV. But once combination therapy was introduced, and HIV was reclassified as a chronic illness, it's kind of dropped off the radar. And I think a lot of people don't really think it's a problem anymore. Um, and I think that, that that is a very worrying thing. The only time that you really hear anything much about HIV is around about World AIDS Day at the beginning of December. Um, so I think that there are a lot of people out there who are HIV positive who don't necessarily know that they are um, or who are at risk of becoming HIV positive because they still believe that HIV is something that is a problem for gay men or for um, haemophiliacs and it's not a problem for, for heterosexuals. Um, actually that's, that's no longer the case. So, so why is, why is working with HIV different from, from working with any other chronic illness? And I guess the main thing is stigma. And that's still a problem for people today because of the, uh, the, the way that, that HIV is, is, is mainly transmitted. Um, so somebody will be being stigmatized eh, for being HIV positive.